down. What up, players? It's the morning after with Nick and Big J. Welcome to Thursday. Welcome, my friends, to the third day of October 2024. My name is Nick. I present to you, Big J. Hey. Hey, Big J. How are you doing, man? Ah, man. Allergy. Really? Just, yeah. yeah no Keep kidding. your butt. It has been for a while, though. Uh, no, I've been last hearing, week. Yes. I mean, that's it. that to me is a long time for allergies well, to be. it's been off and on. Taking uh, you down. Like, it comes in waves. Well, I mean, so. is it? it's usually pretty bad here early, early in the morning for you. Does it get better throughout the day? Yeah. And then, like, in the evening time, boom, I'll just start getting, like, a runny nose and my eyes start to itch. And like, I'm no doctor, but it might be time to switch doctor. up your allergy medicine. No, I did that last year, and it was a disaster. So you went back to the old stuff that also isn't working? I don't understand. It, because this is working better than the other stuff okay. was working. Well, you may want to go see, like, an allergist then. Nothing. Because uh, uh, that was something that I discovered was uh, basically, you know, allergies come and go. They're not something that are permanent. Mm-hmm. What you may be allergic to now, you might not have been allergic to two years ago. And then also what you aren't allergic to now, you could have been allergic to before. And so these things change. And sometimes you need somebody to tell you these are the things that you should probably avoid. For all you know, you're allergic to coffee. And uh, it's starting to really get into your uh, your system in the I, morning. Actually, this is the first sip of coffee I've had. I'm so. just saying. I, I I, I'm, so. I'm using it as an example. I'm the not bad, actually giving a, you a diagnosis. It's a very bad But I'm saying example. there are things that you could be in contact every day that you no longer know that you, or that you are allergic to that you're not familiar with. But also... Uh, having somebody that can tell you what actual medicine works for the allergies that you have is something that you may uh, that may come in handy. That yes, perhaps you may, you switch something around, but there's like I don't know 17 different types of allergy medicine out there, and I know for a long time until I found the allergy medicine that worked for me uh, that it was a battle like what you're going through, and it was miserable. But with the stuff that I take now. It sucks when I wake up, but as it takes effect, it, it, it's great for 24 full hours. I don't have allergy attacks in the middle of the day or later on at night or anything like that. So it's nice. Unless I come in contact with something directly that I am very allergic to, then it becomes an right. issue, of course, as all things do. But uh, it is certainly not fun. Uh, but, you know, as they say, Big J, once you get to the first freeze, which is probably right around the corner uh, in December, er, <laughs> then the December. allergies go away. <laughs> Uh, and so yeah, that who knows is something. If a freeze will come if it's environmental allergies. You know, if it's like, you know, you have seasonal allergies. I should say, if it's an environmental thing, and like you're allergic to cats or dogs or something, then I am actually. Well, but that's probably what it is. Then you're probably well, you are surrounded by them on a constant basis. So that could be. An, but again, you can have medicine that can combat that. Uh, and so <laughs> uh, I wish you luck on your journey, which I know you're not going to take. So. Uh, enjoy that is expensive. the day. I pass. Uh, yeah, no, an allergist is not a cheap. Uh, I can. I will pass. If you remember, a couple years ago, I was in the middle of an allergy test during X Fest. Do you remember that? <laughs> when I had the oh, pad, yeah. the forty-eight yeah. hour patch on my back as uh, we were at X Fest. That's the X Fest that had COVID. And so I wasn't uh, there for. It. Uh, yeah, no, I think it, no, because it was last year's X Fest. Oh. Uh, so you were there for that, I believe. Uh, so yeah, it's not fun. That that I can certainly say. But what is fun, Big J? This show, we have a big one planned for you on Thursday. Uh, we're going to have an artist in here that really knows what they're up to. Misty Monster, who's been on this show before, has a really cool thing happening at Boise Brewing over the next couple of days. Uh, an exhibition, if you will, an opportunity to see her artwork. She's one of the most decorated and popular artists here in the Treasure Valley. She's on our show later on today. We also have a chance for you to go check out a six-pack of shows at the Knitting Factory Concert House. That doesn't suck. We are going to be giving that away with Pop Culture Smackdown. We have your headlines. We're going to hell. And then we play music. Alice in Chains is kicking things off here on the morning after on the X. Spanning the globe in search of news. Important stuff. On the morning after with Nick and Big J. Stop me when this sounds familiar, Big J. Okay. Boise Fire has. Stop! I'm just kidding. Boise Fire had to make their way into a business in downtown Boise yesterday to free three people that were stuck in an elevator in a building there. Yeah. Around 8 p.m. last night, Boise had to res- Boise Fire responded to a business in downtown where three people were trapped in a blind shaft. Now, what that means is there was no special access to this elevator, so it's a tough one when it gets stuck. So it got stuck between the first and third floor, and the elevator did not open to the second floor. That's what makes it a blind shaft. Now, the tech rescue team had to secure the elevator with special blocks bolted to the rails so it wouldn't move. And then team members in harnesses had to climb down and brought the trapped individuals out through the top hatch and safely brought them out. 
to make sure that they were out of the elevator. Now, that reminds me of the time that you got stuck in an elevator and had to be rescued by Boise Fire yeah. Big J. Yeah, good luck getting me up a shaft, pal. Nobody had to come down in harnesses and drag you out of there through the no, top? Okay. No. Thankfully. What was the, Did they just get it working again? Is that all it was? Or they, you had to, I like, mean, crawl eventually. out of there? Yeah, no, I didn't have to crawl, but... It, the 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 you know when the elevator comes down and it lines up with the the door and it opens you know it's flush mm-hmm. it, it didn't make it all the way it was like uh probably about two inches from being flush but the door would open and uh, they're like can't get out you know but eventually they they couldn't get the doors open and then they finally got the doors open and it's like oh i could just step out and they're like no you can't do that and i'm like in case it falls yeah. in the middle of me walking through and I was in there long enough. I'm like, F this. And he's like, it's at your own risk. And I'm like, okay. And I got out of the elevator. I mean, no offense, but like, wouldn't the worst case scenario be you were stuck in there when it yeah, fell? Yeah. Where they're asking you to be? You have to remember, these were banquet hall people that were helping me. Oh, they were actual. actual. Okay. 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 Yeah. So I you mean, were at a point you were like, why am I listening to these people? I just need yeah, to get out of this yeah, elevator. Yeah. I'm like, uh. <laughs> I heard you guys ruffling around up there, making all kinds of noise, not knowing what you're doing. I'm going to just get out of this thing now. Thank you. Smart play, Big J. Yeah. I'm glad you got out safely, and I'm glad they didn't have to harness you out of that thing. Thank you. Me too. Uh, through the top. But, uh, I, but, yeah, those people are traumatized now today. Yeah, I'm sure elevators. It, it, do you find that? Like, do you have, like, flashbacks when you're into an elevator, no. like PTSD? Because were, you, were, you were stuck for a while, but you weren't, like, Couple hours. trapped. Yeah, okay, no, it was no big deal. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of ruined your night, basically, is what it boiled down to. It was the apartment building you lived in, though, right? No. Oh, I thought it was. My apologies. Big J, uh, according to a new poll of NFL players, players enjoy going to Los Angeles the most for away games in their brand new stadium. Uh, Probably not a surprise what city they like to go to the least, Big J. Any guesses? Green Bay? Yeah, the smallest city (laughs) on the actual list. There's nothing to do. There's There's nothing going on. There is nothing to do in Green Bay. Uh, the poll also found that Josh Allen is most likely to win the MVP award this year, at least according to NFL players. And Dolphins wide receiver uh, Tariq Hill was chosen as the first non-quarterback players would choose to draft to start an NFL team. Uh, and so uh, there you go. There's the respect that they have for other players, uh-huh. where they like to play and where they dislike playing. Uh, and uh, that none of those things are really a surprise, but we say congratulations to all those that were chosen. Big J, I know you heard the commercial for the big uh, 911 ABC TV series that had the killer bees. And we, were, we were mocking it and yes, making fun of it off air. It was uh, it was a huge hit. Uh, and so now they are developing another spinoff of that show because they've decided to shutter the doors on 911 Lone Star after its fifth season. So Ryan Murphy and Tim Minier, the uh, two people that produced that show, are figuring out another spinoff of the successful original 911 show, possibly set in Las Vegas, and they expect it to premiere sometime later this year. So 911 is the new CSI. There's 900 yeah. spinoffs for CSI. There are now at least four for 911 as well, all of them revolving around different characters, but essentially the same situations in different cities, which is interesting. But uh, once you create something, you might as well like, you know milk it for everything it's got, right? Well, it develops fans, and then there's characters that in that that spin off in their own little world, yeah, and just fans. like every TV yeah. show, uh, it makes sense why they're doing it. I just, I, I do, I think I told you, I did watch the original nine one one series for a couple of seasons, and then got a little bit too out there for me, so I abandoned ship. You've never watched any of the nine one ones, right? No. Uh, it's because they haven't made their way to CBS. One day soon, though, Big J. You never know. I don't, I don't think that's a determination. Morning either. After with Nick and Big J. There is your important stuff. It is the X Rocks. Here. That's the latest from Dorothy. It is called Mud here on the Morning After with Nick and Big J. We've talked about this several times on this show, but now it's kind of been around long enough that they've been able to do studies talking about the difference between smartphones and quote-unquote dumb phones okay oh, okay so dumb phones making a little bit more of a comeback if you're not familiar with the term it's essentially a derogatory one that they call phones that aren't as connected to the internet as smartphones are the old school flip phones that we used to have the lower tech devices that uh feature just calling and texting and aren't exactly you know hubs for apps and all sorts of different things that are meant to avert your detention and distract you from whatever's going on And so they did a study, finally, of people that had smartphones and people that had, quote-unquote, dumb phones, and they wanted to figure out, okay, does 
the having the dumb phone actually decrease your stress? Does it make you do those life changes that you would think switching to a dumb phone would do? And the answer, Big J, a resounding yes. If those people are looking for a anybody looking for a digital de- detox, dumb phones are the way to go uh, because there's no apps, there's no internet, there's no constant buzzing. Uh, it's just a thing for people that need a break from it all. And they found out that people that have dumb phones, not only do they sleep better, they have improved mental health, and they get more things done during the day, and they're actually happier than those that have smartphones, which is interesting to me. But I'm guessing that those people that have dumb phones have made this conscious decision to make that switch because of it. And if you have that relief in your life, it probably is something that you look forward to. I, I suppose, yeah. And so it's a commitment, I, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, well, or it's <laughs> just like I'm going to unplug. That's just the way it, it does. 89% of people that have dumb phones say they are drastic. Their life has drastically improved since they got rid of their smartphone. Uh, some of them consider it to be a lifesaver for their mental health. They said they were absolutely miserable with all the stuff they were surrounded by, always being connected to their job always being connected to something and having that particular stress attached to it or their attention was diverted at all times because of this phone and they feel like it has truly and honestly improved their life. It is a commitment, but if it's something that you feel like, you know, when we talk oftentimes about how technology can ruin things, and there's no doubt about that, I think it's definitely drastically changed some stuff. But there is an opportunity now for you to go back, and those that do seem to be really, really happy with the choice. Well, I mean, I think it's with uh, with the technology stuff and the phone in particular. It, you know, it's the real, like, frog in the boiling water kind of situation where it, we, you know, it's just kind of like it all uh, started, you know, organically, and then we just get used to it, and then it becomes a part of our lives, and we don't even realize how in-depth it is, like you're saying, with our sleep and this and that, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, I imagine everybody should take a trial of that maybe for like a week and see how it feels. Yeah, I think you it know? would be really, really interesting to see how that comes together. But you're right. I mean, it went from we didn't have this stuff to now everybody has it to you better get it. Otherwise, you're going to be left behind yeah. to, oh, my God, I'm overwhelmed. It's surrounding me and I can't get out of this digital hole that I have buried myself in. Please help me, God, please help me. And so it is one of those deals where you have to make this decision and it has to be something i think you volunteer for just because everything that you don't want about your phone is still pretty much accessible at any turn that you want it to be regardless if you have a phone or not it's not taking the internet away from you or your computer away from you or any of those other things so those distractions are there if you truly need them the question becomes people that make those decisions usually are making them for a reason so it makes sense so maybe It's something you might want to think about. If you are at your wit's end with technology, apparently it works for you to just simply change your phone plan and get like a super easy, basic flip phone. And that could be the key to your happiness. Who knows? Give it a shot. Morning after with Nick and Big J coming up in a few minutes. Big J's got your nerd alert. It's next on the X. The best in tech and gaming, Big J's Nerd Alert on 100.3 The X Rocks. Yeah, we've got a couple things here. And uh, until now, the mobile version of the Epic Game Store has mostly been focused on the brand staples like Fortnite and Fall Guys. But it won't be that way for much longer. Epic Game Store General Manager Steve Allison announced at Unreal Fest in Seattle that it plans to expand the Epic Game Store mobile library with 10 to 50 new third-party games and start a free games program according to mobilebizgamer.com allison said the free games program and third-party titles will be available in the fourth quarter or the last part of the year epic's uh, unreal fest keynote also teased the arc ultimate mobile edition uh will be one of the new third-party games in the mobile store so uh obviously fortnite is taking over things but they want to try to do that with all the other games and a whole bunch of new games coming your way on your phone if you want unless you're trying to detox good luck on that one i'm not sure if you've heard of pal world nick no no probably not all right i'll get into that in just a second but pal world developer pocket pair has signed a deal with uh, the uh, PUBG company crafton to develop a mobile version of the hit game now crafton fresh uh from acquiring hi-fi rush developer tango games work for microsoft has now inked a licensing agreement with pocket pair to expand the power world intellectual property to mobile devices so uh that's going to be interesting now here's the thing uh power world nick is uh currently being sued by nintendo and the pokemon goes company uh, it's a huge lawsuit 
Uh, basically, Power World is kind of like Pokemon Go, but with guns and stuff. Uh, and uh, it's it's similar in a lot of uh, ways. And so Nintendo started a lawsuit uh, just last week. And uh, a part of this was, I think, based on because uh, Power World uh, tried launching on PlayStation 5 everywhere except Japan. So that's where that lawsuit was filed. Pocket Pair has insisted it has no idea which patents it's accused of infringing. But experts have pointed to a, quote, killer patent that uh, revolves around the mechanic of catching Pokemon itself. So... Uh, last week, one patent expert said the lawsuit shows just how seriously Nintendo views the threat of Power World, and it had become a pretty big deal and gotten uh, a lot of uh, press in the game world about some of the stuff that it was doing, and people were like, ah, oh, gosh, it's kind of weird. This looks just like Pokemon Go. How are they letting this happen? And finally, Nintendo has sued them. But now uh, they're working with uh, the PUBG company to make a mobile version uh, that uh, would uh, obviously be a threat to Pokemon Go. So. Now, it's my understanding that Pokemon Go is essentially going to real-world locations to find special things, You don't right? have to. No? It's 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 part of the game, but it's not. But it also lives in a you know console oh. form as well. I thought that's so. what made it Pokemon Go, was you were going places and getting out and moving, but that's not the case? No. Okay. I guess not. Weird. Uh, Amazon Prime has released the official trailer for Like a Dragon Yakuza. It's live action adaptation of the action adventure Sega game franchise, mostly revolving around the Yakuza Kazumu Kiryu. Unlike the teaser Amazon dropped in July, the trailer features a voiceover by Kiryu's actor Ryoma Takayuchi, as well as voice dialogues by other cast members. The series is set across the intersecting timelines from 1995 and 2005 in the fictional town of Kamarucho, which is based on Tokyo's Kabuchio. It will cover the events of the first Yakuza game with some changes in the story based on Amazon's own description of the series. Uh, it will show Kiryu as his friends uh, and his friend uh, Nishiki, Yumi, and Miho plan a heist at an arcade that's apparently under the control of the powerful Yakuza organization called Dojima Family. The trailer looks pretty cool, cool, man. It looks like it could be a lot of fun. We'll see how this lines up with some of the other adaptations that are happening. You ever play those games? Uh, no, not really. But I know they're very popular. Yeah, uh, I played the uh, the last couple and uh, enjoyed them very much. Uh, they're very different and they have a, a different style to them. But uh, it was I wasn't sure if I, it was like my first real kind of dipping my toe into turn based fighting games because uh -huh, yeah. I hadn't really messed around with that. And then of course after that I got into Boulder's Gate and now like I'm all about turn based fighting games. So <laughs> I did I did enjoy the Yakuza games for sure. Yeah, that will be uh coming out. Uh the first three episodes will be available on uh, October twenty first and fourth and then the rest coming out October thirty first. Crazy. I honestly swear to God did not know this was happening in any way, shape or form. I didn't know well, another one that we're that close. I haven't seen the trailer so I'm gonna have to seek now, it out. Nerd alert has uh, enlightened you. Sir. You've taught me something bj thank you <laughs> morning well. after with nick and big j there's your nerd alert on the way important stuff as well as some pop culture smackdown it's the x rocks important stuff on the morning after with nick and big j we all have strengths and weaknesses, Big J. One of your weaknesses, I would say, is time zones. It's just it's just tough sometimes to remember where you are and what time is what. And if you have uh, trouble remembering Earth's time zones, uh, huh? do not visit the moon anytime soon. Because oh, no. NASA is going forward with the plan to give the moon its own damn time zone, Big J. It's about time. It's called Coordinated Lunar Time. It's first of many steps to pave the way for space exploration. A uniform system of time could set humans up for space missions to our moon and beyond, as they say in the Toy Story universe. As the commercial space industry is starting to grow, more nations are active at the actual moon site. There's a greater need for some time standardization, according to NASA. So a shared definition of time is an important part of safe, resilient, and sustainable operations. And so that's why they're going forward with lunar time coming soon to a theater near you. I, uh, I I will say this is probably the most human thing ever, right? To force our time on other places that we have no dominion over and make them conform to what we consider it's about time to be they time. learn. Because if there's one thing we have learned is that the moon year is different than the Earth year, but that's not going to matter at all to us. We just we want to call it moon time, and that's what we're going to do. So take that moon and the people living on it, Big J, which I'm sure are on the dark side. Here's something, uh, maybe it's nothing, but uh, a, a suggestion is floating around the social media world that State Farm is missing a huge opportunity, and that is to team up 
with rookie wide receiver Malik Neighbors of the New York Giants. They're like, if there is ever a, you know, kind of marriage between two, a brand and a person, it should be Malik Neighbors for State Farm. Big J, why? Because his last name? Yeah. You know the motto for State Farm, right? Uh, what is it again? Oh, Refresh? no. Refresh? I'm your you neighbor? No. Like a good neighbor. Oh, like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. And so yeah. people are like, why isn't it like a good neighbor's? State Farm is there. Get Malik dressed up in a, like the Jake from State Farm look, and uh, and you got yourself a commercial. It writes itself, essentially, but nobody has reached out, I guess, for either party yet to make that marriage take happen. I believe they're probably waiting to see if it's legitimate somebody they want to attach their brand to, right? Sure, that and, you know, is it, how much does he want? Uh, I don't know. None That's of that. the other thing. I, I mean, mean like maybe be. he wants a lot of money. But, like, I mean, State Farm doesn't really deal with people that aren't superstars. You can probably name right. on one hand the people that are in State Farm commercials. Go. Patrick Mahomes? Yes. Uh, Andy Reid? Yes. Let's see. Uh, let's go. I've seen Travis Kelsey in a yes. couple. And then you've got, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers. Yes. Trooping around. Yes. So those are superstars in the league, yeah. I would say. Malik Rob- Neighbors isn't quite at that level all, yet. All of those guys have Super Bowl rings. Yeah. yeah. So once maybe he's established himself a little bit more, that marriage could be something that happens. But who knows? Big J, what the hell's going on with Three Days Grace? Well, I can tell you. There was you an know? audio clip yesterday. Yeah, we're going to get the real story here in a second. So there was an audio clip yesterday on social media that uh, starts with current singer Matt Walsh telling a caller to leave a message after the tone. And it's followed by a message from former lead singer Adam Gontier saying, Hey, Matt, it's Adam. I'm just running a few minutes behind, but I'll be at the studio soon if you could let everybody know. All right, man, bye. And the message ends with a graphic that flashes the band's name and then 2X underneath. Now, Adam Gontier hasn't been with Three Days Grace since 2013. The band broke up after four albums. They got Matt Walsh, the brother of bassist Brad Walsh, to replace him, former uh, lead singer of his own right in a band of his own. They brought him along Three Days Grace. That band continued to chug along, pumping out number one hit after number one hit. Adam Gontier went on to uh, kind of do a little side project, St. Sonia, and uh, and then they kind of reunited for the first time in July of 2022 when they were inducted into their high school's Hall of Honor. That led to an appearance in April of 23 where Adam Gontier joined the band on stage in Alabama and performed a couple of songs. Now, Big J, what's the actual news? Because they just released a press release. Yeah, after performing together in Nashville around this time last year, uh, Adam Gontier returning to vocals in Three Days Grace with Matt Walsh remaining as the lead vocalist. So we're going to duet everything, baby. Or they're, like I had said, I think they may actually split up the duties. It could be like a Hagar Roth thing when Van Halen toured for a while. Like Matt Walsh would come out and perform the Matt Walsh Three Days Grace songs. Adam Gontier performs... The Adam Gontier Three Days Grace songs, and then they collaborate on a couple of songs. But uh, it, it, they they are now both, it looks like, at least if I'm reading the press release correctly, yeah. both official members and both official lead vocalists for Three Days Grace. So they added Adam Gontier back into the fold, and they're all going to work together in future music. And and when you see them live, it's going to be everybody playing together, which is yeah, it's interesting. Not them fighting to the death every night <laughs> as two gets to sing no. at the beginning of the... Uh... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just uh, I just know it's great. I mean, everybody's happy together. They've been in the studio working on new music, so I'm sure we'll hear that relatively soon with other coming announcements. Yes, uh, that is for sure. And listen, I, I guess if there's a way this could work out, this is the best of both worlds, right? Yeah. You get every aspect of Three Days Grace that you enjoy. Listen, Three Days Grace is one of the most successful rock bands in rock, period. Uh, whatever they do turns to gold. It doesn't matter who was singing in that band. So to see them both kind of Bury the hatchet, get together. I mean, again, Three Days Grace was formed in high school, man. I mean, all these people have known each other forever. So it's nice when beefs can be settled, bands can come back together, and you don't completely kick out the guy that also was incredibly successful with the band. So best case scenario, I think, if you're a Three Days Grace fan. Yeah, they're family, I think. Not like Fast and Furious, maybe. I don't know. But either way, they're all family. Are you saying they live their lives a quarter mile at a time? Yeah. All right. Morning after a quarter bar at a time with Nick and Big J. That's a music joke, everybody. <laughs> There's your important stuff. We got ourselves. We're going to hell. It's next to the X Rock. Here's stories that are incredibly. F- 
fucked up. Oh man, we're going to hell. Would you join me in my own private hell? The morning after with Nick and Big J on 100.3 The X Rocks. To China we go for today's We're Going to Hell story, Big J. And like, listen, there has to be some sort of common sense involved in pretty much everything you encounter. Because, oh. I mean, like, I don't know if there is a potential lawsuit down the road from this, but it feels like this is something where you would know something would go sideways and it's not what it's supposed to be for. But we have a situation, Big J. Okay. Uh, we have a situation with a 42-year-old man named Wahang Lu. He is a fitness enthusiast in central China. Not and China. He, he had himself a personal trainer, Big J. And his personal trainer, after some vigorous workout sessions, recommended that maybe he purchased a battery-powered massage gun. You've seen these things, right? Oh, yeah. They go, and they do some basic massage stuff with your muscles. And after he it took the fitness instructor's recommendation and purchased a machine gun, he realized how much wonder it could work on his muscles. He, he felt wonderful after using the massage gun on them. Oh, no. He would hit the gym every two days. Oh, no. And as he was looking for a way to relax, he found that the massage gun proved incredibly effective. So much so that at one point, the 42-year-old man was like, man, every time I get home from work, uh, my my head, it's just like I feel like tired and my eyes are all dry. And so he thought maybe that the massage gun would have the same effect on his eyes as it did his muscles. Big uh, J, was he right or wrong? He was wrong. Yeah, he was very wrong. So he said he would he would use the massage gun at a very low setting and use it on the acupuncture points around his eyes. He would do it for five minutes a time. At first, everything seemed fine. But then Mr. Lowe actually was feeling a little bit more relaxed and better after using the massage gun on his eyes. But after about a week of doing this, he noticed, man, my vision is really, really blurry. And it's not going back to normal. That's not great. So he panicked and he went to the hospital where ophthalmologists diagnosed him, Big J, with two full-on lens dislocations and cataracts after a week of using the massage oh, gun God. on his eyeball. The man's vision had deteriorated considerably in just a few days of using it. He dislocated both of his lenses in his you eyes. Do that? I guess. And now he needs surgery to repair the lenses in his eyes to hopefully get some of that vision back, and they're still not exactly sure if it's going to work all the way. He had some serious trauma to his eyes and his lenses because he was using a massage gun on him. Now, of course, doctors have come out and said this is supposed to be used only on muscles and in very tense areas, not on delicate parts of your body, eyes, anywhere else, or something like that. And while it is rare to suffer lens dislocation, it is something that can happen if repeated trauma happens to the eyes which is exactly what a massage gun will maybe boxers or something (laughs) yeah exactly so he needs to undergo surgery to repair the damage to his eyes his uh, case is being presented in medical examiner books as cautionary tales for anyone you looking to use a massage gun for anything other than what it's intended for probably something you want to keep an eye out for no pun intended when you're doing that i mean these things are very high intensity they they do a lot of particular kind of like massaging and it's pretty high impact so even the low setting can do some serious damage as proven here so yeah don't use massage guns on your eyes i thought this was going to be a massage gun junk episode but this guy's not far from it i mean who knows he probably did that too for being on it Let's not jump to conclusions. I feel I, th- like he's an idiot. We all know massage guns aren't used only for massaging your muscles after a workout. It's probably not even the number one use of massage guns. But I don't know if anybody has ever thought these would be great to help out my tired eyes. I, I don't know why somebody would jump to that conclusion. Um, I'm feeling that little, feels my like eyes a are feeling a little tired. You got a massage gun around? Pop, 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 pop. Like jackhammering your eyes is not going to help anything anytime soon. It's not. It's not a good idea. And that's something that should be fairly clear from just the product itself. Unfortunately, it wasn't for this gentleman. <laughs> so don't do it, guys. It's not worth it. Nope. Unless you want to have dislocated lenses in your eyes. And who wants that? Sounds painful. Yeah, not great. Morning After with Nick and Big J. There's your We're Going to Hell story. It is the X Rocks. They'll be here on Sunday. That is stained. It's been a while here on the Morning After with Nick and Big J. Big J will be partying with Mike Masuk behind the stage. I hope so, yeah.
Uh, it is the morning after with Nick and Big J. We've been telling you everything old is new again, and that appears to be the case yet again. Big J, I want you to go back a ways. Now, not to your uh, elementary school days, even your middle school days. I'm talking about your high school days, okay? Okay. So, uh, do you remember, were you a guy in high school that wore cologne or sprayed any kind of cologne? Oh, or yeah. Something? Brute. <laughs> it was brute. Brute by Fabergé, baby. This is perfect for this story. <laughs> So, what is a new trend among younger teenage boys, Big J, is what they're calling old man smell. And it's finding old colognes that were hugely popular in the early oh, to mid-90s. I can't wait to hear this list, man. And spraying them all over themselves to give them that old school smell. They're finding things like Brute is the number one cologne that they are grabbing. By Other- Fabergé, say it right. All right, it didn't say it in the story. Oh, I'm okay. sorry, it doesn't say the maker. Uh, also, uh, on the list of things, uh, these are some that I haven't heard of. Lamal, which hit the market in 1995. Aqua de Geo. Yeah, CK1 Geo. is starting to make a comeback as well, which was a huge deal yeah. in the mid-90s. And uh, and then, you know, it, it's basically things that they're only finding on their dad or their granddad or whatever, their shelf, because most of these aren't for sale anymore these scents that are becoming collectible and that they really like to incorporate into their smell before the brute though i i think that it was old spice it was just the um uh like aftershave. the aftershave yeah like yeah. that was the thing man because you want to feel like you were shaving in the 90s i did do you, do you remember a, uh, a, a cologne called canoe it had a commercial of like guys sailing wow. on ships uh, that was my <laughs> scent in like the 90s i had canoe cologne was what i went with uh, do you still use cologne to this day? No, I'm not. I'm, I haven't used it for years because uh, uh, I don't know. I just I just haven't, and I felt like that was too much for the ladies. Yeah, you want? Well, I, I like, thought you wanted to cover up your natural pheromones, but now you're okay right, with them. Right? No, I, I. Well, well, that. But I'm like that might be too much attractiveness with the smelling good and looking like this good. Yeah, you, you have that problem. I understand. So, but lately I've been kind of feeling like, ah, you know, when when we uh, came back from our trip to Europe. And we were in the Iceland airport. Of course, uh, it's, um, you know, uh, the the uh, duty-free shop, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, man, all the colognes there, but they're so expensive these days. And I'm like, I kind of want to get back into it. So, you know, I'm wearing some nicer clothes. I want them to s- smell nice. <laughs> all right. So you're, you're saying that there's a possibility you could dip your toe back into the cologne yeah. pool. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. You need to ask the wife permission first. If you find some of your old bottles of cologne, throw them up on eBay or tell your wife to because they're going, the older cologne bottles that aren't resellable, going as much as $150 oh, to $350 because they are very popular among the younger generation right now. So those colognes that we used to be made fun of in the 90s for wearing are now popular I again. I thought they were trying. I, I thought I remember they still sell Brute. I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. Brute so. is there. But, and that's the one that's most accessible. I'm talking about stuff that isn't I- I manufactured anymore. But uh, listen, I can't remember the last time I bought cologne, so I can't tell you if Brute yeah. is actually Maybe that would help you, available or not. Uh, do I need help? I'm all right. Are you sure? Morning after. Nope. With oh. Nick and Big J, <laughs> there is your old man smell update. We got some important stuff. Artist Misty Monster joining us next hour and some pop culture smackdown on the way on the X. <laughs> Important stuff. What's going on in the news today? The morning after with Nick and Big J. Well, Big J, some people are leaning on the panic button pretty hard because American dock workers are on strike. Now, that's going to impact some particular areas of things and some that some people aren't exactly sure what it's going to impact. You had mentioned people are running to Costco to pile up on toilet paper and all that kind of stuff like back in the day. Yeah. Uh, That, according to at least experts, that's probably not going to be the stuff that impacts us the most. They get that stuff from down the road. It's going to be uh, grocery store things that we need to be aware of. Uh, it imp- it affects import things, goods from overseas, which may be harder to find. According to UCLA, seafood, bananas, alcohol could be the most impacted foods. Uh, when it comes to actual produce, it's cherries, hot peppers, avocados could also hot peppers! be in short supply. And the best way that you can avoid these things, as Big J has just mentioned, is shop as local as you can. 
And stay to local brands to keep your kitchen fully stocked, then you should find yourself in pretty good positions. Nobody's exactly sure how long this strike is going to last, but it does impact a lot of different things and a lot of goods, specifically ones that are coming into the country on an import basis. So something to keep an eye on as we move forward, Big J. Have you hit the panic button yet? No, no. Wonderful. That's as it should be. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to panic as of yet. Let's get into some baseball stuff, Big J. Uh, the baseball wild stuff. card series wrapped up for three of them. Uh, the Tigers, the Royals, and the Padres all sweep their series. They're advancing on to the division battle. The Brewers took game two last night over the New York Mets. That's going to force a deciding game three in the series today in Milwaukee to see who advances on to the next round. The winner of this particular series will take on the Phillies in the division series. The Padres are going to be taking on the Dodgers, so... We got to figure out how it's going to go. Any predictions? Nah, I got no idea. Let's go with the Dodgers. <laughs> okay. I was more talking about today's game, but oh, all right. Okay. Uh, any predictions there? No. Wonderful. No. Hey, uh, you probably never watched Rugrats as a kid, right? No. Uh, on the Nickelodeon I... channel? Nope. Never got into it. It was a very big uh, cartoon in the 1990s. Of course, had a reboot, made a movie. It was also very successful. And now Paramount is developing a live-action version of the series Rug, Rugrats, bringing back the characters like Tommy Pickles, Chucky Finster. Uh, those characters are going to be CGI, but they're going to be set in the real world, kind of like the Sonic the Hedgehog hit that Paramount had on their hands there. It's unclear which characters from the original series will appear, but the script has been written, and it's been written by Mikey Day, Big J, who you may remember from Saturday Night Live. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, the head writer of Saturday Night Live has teamed up with the script with Mikey Day on that particular one. Uh, Jason Moore has been signed on as director. He directed Shotgun Wedding, and it returns to the big screen for Nickelodeon, which has had several theatrical films and spinoffs. Of course, they've got several SpongeBob SquarePants, very successful movies that have made their way on, that some of which, the later of which, I believe, are also CGI. So it's a different look for SpongeBob, but... We got ourselves a possibility of a Rugrats live action movie. Although, again, I remind people, I don't like when they call it live action when it's all CGI based just in the real world. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not live action. No, no. It's just CGI placed with a live background. And, uh, you know, I I guess you could get into, I mean, do you consider Sonic the Hedgehog the movie's live action? Yeah. You do. Even though Sonic is CGI. Interacting with it. Right. But yeah, that, that, and it would be impossible to make a live action Sonic, of course, is the other side of this. Right. But this is babies, and so it's a little bit different. But Big J, these babies, of course, talk, and so it's a it's a whole new world. Like three men and a baby. No, the baby didn't talk in three men and a baby. Morning after with didn't Nick it? and Bruce Big Willis J. Bruce Willis was the voice of. No, you're thinking of Look Who's Talking. Oh, whoops. Morning after with Nick and Big J. There's your important stuff. Your pop culture smackdown next on the X Rocks. Smackdown. Right. On the morning after with Nick and Big J. Yeah, and uh, we have a nice morning after prize package here for you with uh, a whole plethora of tickets to shows that are coming to uh, the Knitting Factory. And uh, let's see here. Did they all disappear? Uh, we have uh, shows to uh, the Black Dahlia Murder. We'll get you to Highly Suspect uh, and a few other shows as well here in a six-pack of tickets. You just got to beat me in Pop Culture Smackdown. Here comes our phone number, 208-287-1003. If you want tickets to six different shows at the Knitting Factory Concert House, you're going to have to defeat Big J in Pop Culture Smackdown. Been kind of easy the last couple of days. We'd like to see that uh, change in uh, kind of modem here in a few minutes. Are you That's ready? on me. <laughs> you ready? I got to make that change. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good luck to you, Big J. All right. To the phones we go. Hello, the X. Yellow, you there? I win. I am. Oh, there you oh. are. Hi, who's this? This is Tammy. All right, Tammy, you're up first. Tammy, in the M. Night Shyamalan movie Unbreakable, who played the lead role of David Dunn? Bruce Willis. That is correct. All right. Nice work, Tammy. Big J, what was Bob Saget's film directorial debut? I'm going to go with Dirty Work. Right. Correct. Back to you, Tammy. Rogers is the last name of what Scooby-Doo character? Oh. Uh, let me think about that one. Got me on that one, too. Rogers. Rogers. 
In my last Scooby-Doo character, I have no clue. <laughs> Take a shot in the dark. Yep. That's what I would do. Take a guess. Shaggy. Yes. Right. Shaggy Rogers. That would have been my guess, too. Is the right answer. Big J, in the TV show The Simpsons, who is Apu married to? Looking uh, for a character name, obviously. Uh, Janice. Wrong. No. Mrs. Apu. Uh, no, that feels degrading. Wrong. The answer is Manjula. Right. Is the character name of that's who a, Apu deep, is deep married part. to. Well, I mean, she plays a pretty big part. They have octuplets yeah. kind of left. Hey, congratulations, Tammy. That means you are victorious. You've got tickets to six different shows at the Knitting Factory Concert House throughout the month, beginning with Highly Suspect this Sunday. Hang on one second. We'll make sure you're good to go and enjoy all six of those shows. Ticket rich. Well done with Pop Culture Smackdown. Up next, local Boise artist Misty Monster joins us to talk about her cool things happening at Boise Brewing. It's next on the x Rocks. Disturbed, that's the sound of silence here on The Morning After with Nick and Big J. You've had Misty Monster in our studios before. You know what she's all about. An amazing local artist that has done some incredible things in her career. And it is reaching all-time highs as there's going to be some really cool things in the future that we want to talk about. Specifically, the immediate future today, as a matter of fact. But it's an honor to welcome back into the studio Misty Monster. Hi, Misty. Hi, thanks for having me back. Thank you for coming back in. Congratulations. It's a pretty big first Thursday for you, right? Yes, it is. Boise Brewing tonight, um, 5 to 8. We're part of First Thursday in downtown Boise. And I am showing 14 of my tarot paintings tonight. So it's a whole suit. So in the tarot, suits are similar to suits and card decks. Like you have clubs and hearts, but in the tarot, you have like cups and wands and things. So I'm so showing the whole suit of wands and it's all skeletons. Okay. So nice. right on trend for Halloween, October. Yep. It's yep. perfect. And, you know, last time you came in, we were talking about this tarot deck that you've been working on for a really long time. This is an incredibly important passion project for you, right? It is 15 years. Wow, it's crazy. <laughs> A large portion of my life yeah. I've been working on it um, so right now I'm just trying to show the paintings in like small bits here and there um, tomorrow we're also having an opening at Riverside Hotel where I'll have two paintings in a group show also tarot paintings so I've kind of created a map where I'm handing them out tonight at Boise Brewing along with the potato oracle card okay <laughs> where a potato will tell you your fortune you just get a little <laughs> scratch off and you get a like Find out what she has to say about I life. It. I love um, it. I call them her starch raving mad predictions. Oh, so, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm from Idaho. I can't help it. Oh, but wonderful. Anyway, uh, so yeah, a <laughs> couple of events coming up. We're just kind of trying to do little pocket, like pop-up event type things leading up to next October's big all 78 tarot paintings being shown, costumes being worn from the tarot, the whole shebang. Yeah, the work you put into this, I mean, it's its a lot. I mean, each time you do one of these events uh, is, is a lot of work. But uh, going in towards next year, I mean, this is your life's work. Oh, it is. And this, I feel like this is a little practice run, you know, where I'm like, well, how will this feel if I hand out some, like, you know, merch here or do this here or call up you guys and go, hey, can I come on? Sure. <laughs> so. Yeah. No, it, ma it makes sense because this has been, you know, such a project that you've worked a long time for mm -hmm. and to try to see these things come to fruition is is also a lot of work to make these events happen and these one-offs happen and planning a gigantic exhibition for next october is a pretty big deal as well especially considering the numbers that you're dealing with 78 painting is nothing to sneeze at of course the paintings that are going to be on display tonight nothing to sneeze at as mm -hmm. well um you know as you put these on is it like just to give people kind of like a sneak peek of what this is going to look like are, are there going to be some things available to purchase what's the idea behind the uh, the first thursday showing tonight at boise Brewing? i would i think it's m many things mm -hmm. happening um these paintings will just sit in my apartment until next October if I don't do something with them. So showing them is one step, sure. right? Yeah. Let's get them out there. It also lets people know I'm doing this, right? Like let people know so far in advance. Like, so maybe there's a little hype before the actual, you know, big show next year. Um, yes, Dana, my cousin, who's sitting in here, but off camera, <laughs> <laughs> she is going to be running. We're having a little pop-up merch store tonight also. So we found some old... I used to sell full, like, 
I would go to San Diego Comic Con and I used to sell here at like Hyde Park Street Fair and stuff, mm-hmm. but like jewelry and prints and stuff like that. But we found some from those old shows because I quit like 10 years ago. I just didn't want the whole traveling, being a merchandiser life. But she found some stuff. I found some stuff and she's going to sell it tonight at the show. So that's kind of a special from the vault kind of thing. Okay. So, yeah, a little bit of sales, but paintings obviously I have to hold on to until next year till I at least get one big show out of the way. I would have to imagine that, you know, uh, as you're uh, approaching that big goal next year, is it hard to put uh, put put away other ideas that might pop up for some things? Like, yes. how do you manage that? And I mean, that's got to be difficult because sometimes, you know, you get an idea and it's, it's still in the front of your head. And you, meanwhile, you're trying to work on this other project. A hundred percent. I'm actually struggling with that every day. There was a show that came up where it was a fundraiser for the Peregrine Fund oh, yeah. for a new gallery, the Poetic Tiger Gallery that just opened. And so I did a little five by seven for them. And I'm knew I had no time to do it, but I was like, oh, I still want to do it. And then to make these potato oracle cards, I had to paint a new painting of a potato. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I know it sounds so awesome, but, um, and then also I can't turn down, but I just got invited to the Krampus Invitational Art Show. I guess it's being put on at Visual Arts Collective. Um, Noble Hardesty is part of it. He's like a pretty well-named local artist. And I'm like, Krampus, of course. Yeah. At least I have till the beginning of December, but... It's exactly what you said. I struggle constantly to stay in this lane, but still not turn down other exciting things, you know? It makes a lot of sense, and it makes you incredibly busy, I'm sure. But hopefully, when you have an event like what's going to be happening over the next couple of Mm -hmm. days, it it, it reinvigorates you and goes, you know what? This is why I started this to begin with. These people are interested in this really cool original artwork, and they respect and honor what I do, which is really awesome. And, of course, you're incredibly talented. So there's that as well that brings it into the fold. But we want people to show up both tonight and tomorrow night at these Mm -hmm. events so they can see sneak peeks of these amazing tarot cards that you were nice enough to kind of show us a little bit last time you came in. And I know these things are amazing. So if people want to show up to Boise Brewing tonight, what time is everything's going down? Okay, Boise Brewing, everybody always asks, where is it? Mm -hmm. It is downtown on Broad Street. It is close to the Trader Joe's that's right down the there. Trader yep. Joe's, yeah. So that's the area. Um, I am going to be there before five, but five to eight is kind of like the first Thursday time that people can come through. I will definitely be there five to eight, Boise Brewing. I'm going to be wandering around. They have food and drink for purchase, so you can actually sit down and eat while you're there too. So I have people from work coming and some friends and some family, and I invited everybody yeah no it's <laughs> you know, good i think i even have a couple of my intellectual property lawyers showing up <laughs> they're like sure hey they like the party too. yeah it i love sense. it it made me so happy i'm like okay i was like maybe they don't get invited to stuff that's like yeah like so like fun i guess like <laughs> come to the brewery but plenty of people from work were like brewery okay yeah yeah <laughs> so. is it going to be because they have like the uh the the brewery side of things and they have mm-hmm. the restaurant side of things is it on one particular side of boise brewing that people want to look for well, we are going to set it up actually a few hours from now. Uh-huh. So I haven't even set it up we'll yet. We'll figure it out as we but go. I think it's going to be on both okay. sides. I honestly do. If not, they're both connected. You so can't miss. We, I'll, mean, be, I'll be walking around. I'm in a B shirt, everybody. <laughs> there's a big bumblebee on it. You can find me. Just look for the big B. <laughs> And if there's not art hanging up where you are, it's in the other part of Boise Brewing is essentially what it boils down to. And then if people want to go to the Riverside Hotel side of things, when's that all going down? That is tomorrow night. Um, That's for the first Friday downtown for Garden City. So first Thursday, Boise, first Friday, Garden City. Um, They are putting them all in the lobby of the Riverside Hotel. Nice. So I think it's like. I don't know how many artists are in that one, but like multiple artists. It's Mm -hmm. for Treasure Valley Artist Alliance. So they do a lot of group shows. It's kind of cool. So that's from 530 to 8. So just keep the 5 to 8 in your mind. It's, It's close enough. So... I like it. Today and tomorrow are when these events are happening. You have an opportunity to support some great local artists, as well as seeing some really cool and really exclusive things. How big are these canvases that we're talking about? They are 16 by 20 and then framed, you know, added another few inches around Mm -hmm. them and stuff. And they're all over the place in framing, too. We have some awesome glitter frames. We have some awesome, you know, black frames. Like, honestly, people have been more excited about the framing in some ways because they've been looking at these paintings online for so long. But then they see that they're like, oh, my gosh, it's a whole the whole thing's art. Right. I'm like, 
come down and see the frame. Yeah, so, it's it's amazing. You know, it's, it's something new. Amazing artwork that you're going to be able to see. We've had a chance to check some of it out. Now you can in person. And uh, Misty, if people want to follow you or check out some of your artwork or purchase something online, what's the best place to follow you and do those things? Uh, my website, morbidlyadorable.com. I am also, let's see, I'm also doing a GoFundMe. That's actually, that's how I got the first. I've had 26 of the 78 paintings framed already. And that was all done through crowdfunding. So it's been pretty amazing because I'm looking at probably ten to twelve thousand dollars just to get seventy eight paintings done. Yeah. And I don't think people really do the math and they go, Oh, yeah, it takes a lot to frame yes. stuff. So I have gofundme.com slash morbidly adorable tarot. And if anybody wants to pitch in, it's super awesome. I've had some really great people. Anywhere from five bucks to fifteen hundred people have pitched in. It's been pretty amazing. Um, those are my two main, I guess, if Instagram, mm -hmm. morbidly adorable. There you go. <laughs> so. That's where you find it. It's the common thread uh, swinging mm -hmm. through all this amazing and beautiful artwork. But uh, if you get a chance, check it out in person tonight. Boise Brewing, tomorrow, the Riverside Hotel. That's where you can see some of these sneak peeks before we are about a year out from the gigantic exhibition mm -hmm. that you've been working your tail off on as well. But uh, listen, we're fans. We love what you do. It's incredibly awesome stuff. And we're very happy that you're finally able to show some people this artwork. And I'm sure you're excited about it as well, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. Go check awesome. out morbidlyadorable.com if you want more information. And then go tonight to Boise Brewing and check out the fun for First Thursday. Misty, thank you for coming in. Thank we appreciate you. it. I'm so yeah, thank you. Anytime. Morning after with Nick and Big J. First keyword of the day for textual healing next on the X. <laughs> It's stuff. It's time for headlines on the morning after with Nick and Big J. Headlines brought to you by T Mazda and the pre owned superstore. Looking for a new or used vehicle? Check out gotmazda.com. They got the big blue I pre check button there. You click it, you find out what you're pre qualified for before you even step foot on the lot. It's a wonderful tool if you're looking to get into a new vehicle for you or a family member, somebody you love. Check it out for yourself at gotmazda.com. Headlines are as follows Mr. Mailman, no! I said no, Mrs. Mail person. And let's try this again. Let's try this again. You ever heard of Fat Bear Week, Big J? No. Well, it's now in full swing after a gory delay. I don't know if it's anything like Brat Summer, but it's an annual event hosted by Katami National Park, and it was postponed by a day after live stream cameras captured two Alaskan grizzlies fighting with one another, and it was a bloody, brutal brawl that, unfortunately, one did not survive, Big J. And nobody wanted to see enter, that. One bear leave. Yeah, it was Bearder Dome, and it didn't work out for one of them. And that's not what they wanted for Fat Bear Week. That's not the celebratory kind of theme and vibe they were going for for this week. So now they're trying again. But, you know, as with all things, Big J, nature is a bitch sometimes, and you, you can't really plan this stuff out. Sometimes when two yeah. bears got to fight it out, two bears got to fight it out, dude. Uh, but Fat Bear Week commemorates the bear's summer-long effort to fatten up for hibernation for the winter, which is why it's called Fat Bear Week. Makes you can sense. vote for your favorite bear, the fat ones, of course, at explore.org slash Fat Bear Week. So now you know what Fat Bear Week is. Hopefully no more casualties involved in Fat Bear Week. That would be nice. Because you know what's going to be next. People are going to be betting on which one wins. Oh, you think they're not already? Oh, I mean... I know, I'm just hearing about it for the first it's time. Kinda so. like, uh, it's kind of like Back to the Future, though. You, unfortunately, you don't know where or when two fat bears are going to fight each other. So it's tough to really yeah. plan that stuff out in advance. But when it happens, you better believe all eyes are on the bears. Find it out. Mr. Mailman, no. Or I said no, Mrs. Mailperson. I said no, Mrs. Mailperson. A Michigan man has found himself in jail. That's because he allegedly threatened his postal carrier for delivering his mail. Uh, police say 61-year-old Russell Vallo of Farmington Hills, Michigan, allegedly threatened the mail carrier because she kept delivering Kamala Harris campaign materials to his mailbox, and he said he didn't want them. Now, you should know that postal carriers deliver the mail that's addressed to the person. They have nothing to do with the materials that are received, and they have to, by law, deliver all the materials they have in their possession to your door they're not this is not an option for them they can't edit out your mail as they go mm -hmm. but that didn't mean anything to russell Vallo as he got really angry then started shouting racial slurs at the woman who's uh, delivering the mail and then he bought took out a gun and threatened her which at one point the uh, the carrier basically ran away 
Police showed up, arrested the man. He was charged with ethnic intimidation and misdemeanor assault with a deadly weapon. Uh, he could be looking at two years in jail, all because of some mail. Seems a bit ridiculous to me, right? Yeah, very. But we're all even-headed and, and like really calm heading into this election, aren't we? No. Everything's going to be okay, Big J. Tell me. Nothing's going to be okay. Great, great. So I should just go back to watching Bears fight to the death. Yeah. Huh? Wonderful. Wrap it up with Mr. Mailman. No, a postal service worker has been accused of stealing checks from letters and then fraudulently stealing a pandemic relief loan. That's a lot of money, Big J. Oh. Turned out that Anthony Verdier was charged with mail theft and wire fraud on Wednesday. They totaled up about $1.5 million in checks that he stole while he was working at the USPS Distribution Center in St. Louis. They also claim he obtained a $21,000 PPP loan through fraudulent means as well. If he is found guilty, he is facing up to 20 years in prison. So see what happens when mail carriers mess with your mail? They go to jail for a really long time. So this is why it's important. Yeah. I don't know. I still don't know how you cash those checks. I guess you have to create faulty businesses and maybe names to make that happen. But he must have been finding a way to do it because otherwise you're just stealing pieces of paper that are not making anybody any money. Yeah. But if he was able to cash $1.5 million worth of checks, it makes me wonder if my grandma's been sending me checks this whole time for my birthday and I just didn't know it. Because somebody's been intercepting my checks. What are the odds of that? Pretty high these days. You think? Yeah. Uh, you don't know my grandma. Morning After with Nick and Big J. Is the one that wore the one onesie once? No, she's dead. There's your Sorry. headlines. It is the Morning Rest After peace. with Nick and Big J on the X. Bad impressions. So far, I'm not impressed. On the morning after with Nick and Big J. And for bad impressions, here we got a great pair of tickets for you. Sunday night at the Knitting Factory, highly suspect returns. Uh, Dead Poet Society going to be with them. It will be a fantastic show. Of course, highly suspect played a few shows for us, Nick, here in the past uh, 10, 15 years or so. Uh, that'll be a great one for you. You just need to figure out the clues today. It will be easy. All right. And it's fun. 208-287-1003. If you'd like these highly suspect tickets, of course, you need to figure out bad impressions. If you're not familiar with the game, Big J has three clues which point you in the direction of what, Big J? Uh, a celebrity. Okay. Because uh, every time I say it's a celebrity, it, mm -hmm. you change it up into a TV show or a band or, about. or it's a fictional character. So today it's a celebrity. Yeah. And if you can figure out who that celebrity is in three clues or less, congratulations. It is you going to highly suspect. Big J, are you ready? I'm ready. To the phones we go. Hello, the X. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? My name is Aaron. All right, Aaron. You're up first. Good luck. Brody, I'm an FBI agent. Uh, next one. Whoa. I know how to drive race cars. One more. I'm Ted Theodore Logan. We are wild stallions. Whoa. Oh, jeez. I have no clue. Really? Oh, Aaron, no. Oh. Come on. Come you on, You don't Aaron. know who it is? Come on, man. What? I don't. All right. Okay. Listen, Sorry. we tried. It's okay. Don't apologize to me. Apologize Good. to the gentleman. Good. Hello, the X. First. How's it going? Hey, man. Pretty good. Did you hear the clues, or do you need him again? No, I need him again, please. Brody, I'm an FBI agent. Whoa. Next one, I know how to drive a race car. The agent, I know how to drive a race car. What, what's the next one, please? I'm Ted Theodore Logan. We are wild stallions. Oh, Keanu Reeves? There yes. you go. I think you changing the line. Yeah, to, I didn't uh, write these down. I, I mean, to, come on. To the story, it confuses people as to what you're trying to reference. But good job, man. Hang on. We'll hook you up. Actually, with those know the line. High, it's I know Kung Fu. And then you change it to oh, I know yeah. how to drive a race yeah, car. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, but, I didn't mean to put contactual meaning. Yeah, because that's why Keanu Reeves yeah. is in the news, right? Yeah. Uh, Keanu is going to be showcasing his racing skills uh, coming up this weekend uh, in the number 92 car for Toyota Gazoo Racing Group. Uh, and he'll be driving a street legal Toyota GR86, capable of speeds up to 150 miles per hour. He'll be racing among a grid of over 30 identical cars on a road course uh, format at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, baby. Fun. Yeah. Oh, they're turning that into a road course, huh? Uh, I guess uh, okay. they can do that. So uh, Reeves will be driving for Eagles Canyon Racing, joining fellow guest driver Cody Jones of the YouTube channel Dude Perfect. Uh, while not a professional race car driver, Reeves is passionate motorcyclist and motorsports enthusiast. 
with prior racing experience winning the celebrity category in the 2009 Toyota Pro Celebrity Race. So uh, get out there and get it, man. Nice job. Yeah. Is there any way we can watch this, or is this like a private event that does none of our business? Oh, I'm happen? sure it'll be on TV somewhere. Right. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing, seek it out, but you get to see Keanu Reeves behind the wheel, much like I'm sure his weapons training, he probably takes it very seriously. Yeah, I would imagine. And is ready to go. So uh, best of luck, and hopefully it all works out for him. Morning After with Nick and Big J. There's your bad impressions. We wrap up the show here next on The X. Save through money. G Elephant, that is no rest for the wicked. Wrapping up the Morning After with Nick and Big J for this particular Thursday. Hey, thanks to Misty Monster for popping by and talking about her really cool art display this very evening at Boise Brewing. We recommend that you check it out because it looks like it's going to be pretty awesome. On top of that, tomorrow out at the Riverside Hotel as well. If you want to get a little sneak peek of these tarot cards she's been working so, so hard on. It's a great opportunity for you to check it out and support some great local artists, which we always recommend that you do. Also had a chance to give away a bunch of tickets, another six-pack up for grabs. The final one that we have will happen tomorrow morning here on the morning after. Lounge at the End of the Universe will be in there as well. We'll have a good time. We're going to talk to John Polar Bear Gonzalez tomorrow on the show. We're going to get funny. It's going to be a very good time. And that leaves you with the floor, Big J. Yeah, well, uh, we got to announce our winner for the uh, the VIP Tim Montana a Record Exchange Experience from Big J's Beard Brigade and uh, my team. We raised almost uh, three thousand dollars, Nick. Awesome. And uh, that doesn't include the uh, the money from the uh, Harley uh, raffle. So we'll see. My goal was five thousand for the team, so that's pretty dang good. And uh, our lead our lead guy uh, Kevin, he uh, he donated uh, just under with some uh, company matching stuff uh, about eight hundred bucks. That's so, really really awesome. Congratulations! Yeah, thank you so much, Kevin. Always there, and uh, you know everybody else in the team, uh, amazing. And uh, we'll start earlier next year, and uh, I'll have shirts made for everybody this time around, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be really nice. But very much appreciated to everybody who uh, came out and uh, who donated. Uh, can't thank you guys enough. Such an amazing uh, group of people here in the community that uh, listen to the station and uh, help support what uh, the Alzheimer's Association of Greater Idaho does. So, so what does that mean Kevin wins exactly? Uh, he is going to get uh, the VIP experience on Tuesday when we uh, have the Hailstorm Tim Montana show come to town. Uh, Tim Montana is going to join uh, myself and Kevin at the record exchange at some point in the afternoon, do a little bit of shopping. Uh, Kevin's going to get himself a couple of uh, vinyls. He's a big vinyl fan, so that'll come in handy. Uh, and I uh, get to meet Tim, and uh, I've heard that Tim is a really, really cool dude. So he's from Montana, obviously, very cool guy. So he should name himself after that. Uh, say yeah, that's and uh, and then uh, we'll uh, be hanging out VIP style at the show. We'll get to meet uh, Hailstorm as well. So very nice. Fun. Well, it pays to listen. It pays to give back as well uh, when it comes to hanging out on the X. So congratulations, Kevin. Enjoy that. Congratulations, Big GM, raising so much money for the Alzheimer's Association of yeah. Greater Idaho. That's in a very, very important cause. And as you said, I'm sure we're looking forward to doing it all over again next year. Yeah. Morning thank you. after thank you for with your Nick. Uh, help as well. You're welcome. I'm happy to I'm happy to contribute. Morning after with Nick and Big J. That's it for us. Jason Drew's up next. See you tomorrow. It's the X Rocks.